What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing fantastic. This is the Solid Rock Training Show. I'm your host, Bob Algard, and today I'm joined with founder and CFO, Chief Fitness Officer, Derek Geiges. We're gonna be taking you on a journey behind the scenes of what fitness business experts and entrepreneurs do to level up in everyday life. Join us on our journey as we help everyday people learn how to start training for what matters. All right, Derek, so today's our first ever podcast right here at HQ, and everybody's gotta know, why should they listen to us? Why shouldn't they listen to us? <laughs> Bob, thanks for having me on the show today, dude. I am super excited about this. I think uh, Solid Rock brings a lot of value to the marketplace. Um, we live in a world where fitness is telling us more, 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 more. And uh, what we're gonna provide in this podcast and what we provide in our training services uh, at Solid Rock is a quality over quantity approach. And that's the value that we're gonna provide to everybody. Awesome, man. So like, what are some of the things that you feel like we do uniquely in the marketplace that no other gym does? Absolutely, it's a great question, man. Um, things that I think we do uniquely is we focus on relationships and results. Fitness is just something that we happen to do, but we love serving people. And we realize at the end of the day, the relationships we form with the people that come through our four walls is far more important than anything else. Right. Um, and if we can form those relationships, people are going to get the results because they're gonna keep coming back day in and day out because fitness is a lifestyle. It's not just something, hey, I signed up, I go do fitness once a week, or I sign up every year at the new year and uh, work out for a little while and then just stop. No, it's all about consistency right. coming day in and day out. And when you have someone there to hold you accountable, it's a lot easier to achieve your goals. For sure, absolutely. It's kind of funny you mentioned that because that's one of the things we're gonna talk about today is looking forward to 2020. You know, what are some of the common things that we see people making mistakes with, right? So uh, you mentioned lifestyles, habits, all that stuff. I think you're an expert at that, you know, and uh, a lot of people don't know your background, but tell us a little bit about who you were prior to becoming a business owner and a fitness business entrepreneur. Yeah, man, prior to becoming a uh, business owner and a fitness business entrepreneur, um, I'm a, just a good old boy from Charleston, South Carolina who loves family. Uh, I grew up playing a ton of different sports. I was always extremely competitive and uh, I was always an extremely hard worker. My dad taught me hard work at a young age. He got me up at five in the morning. Um, I lived out in the country, so my summers, I would get up early in the morning and I would literally, I was running a chainsaw by like <laughs> nine years old, 10 years old, like cutting lumber. And oh, he man. worked very, very hard. When I was a kid, I thought it was childhood labor. Thanks, Papa John. Thanks, Papa G. <laughs> I thought it was childhood labor, but uh, looking back on it now, uh, I'm just super grateful for him and my mom of teaching me a hard work ethic. And uh, that allowed me to be successful in a lot of areas in my life. And uh, I use what I learned at a young age through sports in high school and college, and now in my professional career as a fitness business owner. For sure, yeah, and it's really evident, right? Because you have all the habits and consistencies, so not only do you actually tell people what to do, but you live it by it, right? So you live by the things that you teach others, which is super inspirational. It's one of the things I enjoy most about working with you as well, and it's one of the things that I think that you bring as an incredible asset to everybody around you, so it's super cool. So like, going back to what we're looking for in 2020, what is the thing that you are most excited about going into 2020? This is literally the last day of 2019. It's December 31st as we're filming this. What's the one thing that you're looking forward to most going into 2020? Going into 2020, this one's gonna be personal to me. I actually just became a dad right around Thanksgiving time. So I'm excited to be a father. I'm excited for what fatherhood has in store. So far it has been incredible. And then professionally, uh, I'm just so freaking fired up about the mission of Solid Rock Training. I believe we're gonna provide something very valuable to the marketplace and we're gonna help change the industry on a large scale. And uh, we're gonna do that by serving people, by fulfilling the heartbeat of our organization, which is to love God and love people. And we're gonna inspire them to live healthy and happy lives. So good. Awesome, man. So I know everybody is wanting to know because the tagline for today's episode is the origin story of Solid Rock Training. So you and I are just going to have a conversation about how we all got started, where it began, and uh, the original kind of pieces going all the way back to when we were in college. 
And uh, when we first started talking, I guess probably like our sophomore or junior year, about wanting to open a gym together. Yeah. So I'll let you kind of like take it from there, bro. Yeah, absolutely. So starting in college, uh, I was at the University of Oklahoma. Bob was at the Citadel, which is in Charleston, South Carolina. And uh, him and I had talked about it, probably our sophomore year of, uh, of college. We wanted to open this gym. The name of our gym was Thrive, by the way. We had a whole business model and concepts uh, drawn out. Thrive was taken, so that's why we're not called Thrive Fitness, guys. That's right. But uh, we talked about that after a while, and then Bob and I both graduated from college, and uh, we just we settled for the everyday, you know, life of working the nine to five just to make ends meet and to have money. And uh, neither one of us were fulfilled. He went to work for Chick Fil A in a development program. Awesome company, though. Learned a lot. Yeah, Chick Fil A is a great company. Yeah. man, those chicken minis are good. <laughs> they are so good. And I was a uh, police officer in a local police department here in Norman, Oklahoma, where. I learned so much and I had such great, incredible leadership there. It was, it was really awesome to learn from some of my supervisors there, but uh, realized that that wasn't for me. Bob realized Chick-fil-A wasn't for him. Bob did some consulting, worked on some political campaigns in the meantime as well. And then uh, I had the opportunity to start my own business, um, actually formed the business in the state of South Carolina, but then through a connection here in Norman, Oklahoma, uh, a local entrepreneur, you know, heard that I was wanting to start my own business and move back home. And he was like, hey, man, I have this awesome facility and <laughs> kind of explained what that would look like. And uh, he helped me get my start and, um, you know, started the business, started training athletes, actually. Yeah. And uh, it was a lot of athletic training. And uh, which makes a, sense based on your background, yeah, right? Makes sense based on my background. And um, some of the parents were like, hey, Derek, uh, what do you think about doing like uh, an adult class? So then I started doing an adult class and that kind of caught some fire. And about after six months of doing it on my own, not really having any like business background, I just knew like I had a work ethic and I didn't, I knew I could outwork anyone and I was gonna be successful. Um, but was literally ramming my head against the wall trying to figure it out. So I called Bob and I said, hey Bob, you know, I got this gym going and all this. Bob's working at his uh, consulting firm at the time. And uh, he comes out and visits to see if he can help me out. And um, Bob was supposed to leave three days after visiting, but a hurricane hit the East Coast and he couldn't <laughs> so leave. So crazy. So I sold him on the idea uh -huh. of moving to Norman, Oklahoma. And, crazy. And partnering um, in business together where he would run the business side of things and um, I would do all of our product development and fitness services. And uh, that's kind of that's how everything happened. And, it's just evolved over time and uh, through a lot of trial and errors, heartache, learning, growing, uh, solid rocks evolving into what it is today. Yeah, it's so cool, dude. Guys, I just gotta segue this real quick. This is pretty funny. So when Derek's talking about the six months when he was out here just slinging lead by himself, uh, we talked throughout all that because we had had a really good personal relationship. But when he's like, dude, you gotta come out here. A, I need help, but B, like, this is a really cool spot. He's like, it's really, really a freaking cool location. I was like, sure, yeah. And then I get picked up from the airport by Derek, literally come down to Norman, Oklahoma, and then we get off the interstate, and all of a sudden we start taking these back roads. I'm like, dude, where in the world are we going right now? And sure enough, uh, Solid Rock Training was literally started on a farm. So nothing truer than a good old boy Oklahoma story, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. So... Uh, I thought it was a little crazy at first, and then I realized, you know what, this is really cool, this is really special. So uh, I decided, you know, let's, let's join forces and jump on in, and it's been quite the journey, I would say, uh, up to this point, right? So all that to be said, you know, origin of Solid Rock training, how'd you come up with the idea? Why'd you want Solid Rock to be Solid Rock? Absolutely, man. Well, my faith is extremely important to me. It's the most important uh, value in my life. Uh, and as a Christian man, the name Solid Rock just stood out to me because Jesus Christ is my solid rock, my firm foundation. And why not training? Like Solid Rock training. It just like hit the heart. And uh, that's how I came up with the name. So good. And... So, you know, like that's internal battle. The thing that we have all these forces in the world against us, whether it's time, it could be it's something to do with our soul, something to do with our faith, 
whatever, but you chose Solid Rock specifically because it had a lot of value and meaning to you at that time. Now it's something way bigger than that too. It's got a lot of value and meaning to others, right? Absolutely. And so how have you seen that struggle that you're going through be meaningful and impactful to other people, the people that we serve here every day? Yeah, man. So the heartbeat, love God, love people, how is that impactful to other people? Because every single person comes through this door with something different. Everybody has baggage. So for me, why do I love fitness? I personally struggle with anxiety. I personally struggle with depression. Yeah. Um, fitness is my outlet. When I work out, I feel better. Um, I'm not as anxious. I don't feel as depressed. Sure. Uh, people come through our doors for a multitude of reasons. I'll give you a male and a female different uh, perspective of just a broad, a broad perspective. So man may come through um, in his mid forties who just had his third son and uh, works all day, comes home and is just wiped out, has no energy to play with his kids, doesn't feel like he has a lot to give to his spouse. And uh, he may start a fitness routine, so he has energy to play baseball with his son, throw a football or baseball outside when he gets home. And then he has energy to pour into his wife at the end of the day. And right. that's just a typical example. And uh, our fitness services allow people to have that extra energy, that strength, that stamina to be able to do those things. Um, we have a female who's maybe 35 years old, just had her, her last child. She had yeah. two or three kids, and she's looking to get back in shape and tone up because she has just been go, 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 living for her kids, serving them, serving her husband, and uh, she's looking to do something for herself now and uh, wants to get strong, wants to have that longevity, and uh, we're able to provide that service to help them live that healthier and happier life. For sure. Yeah, man, and that's the cool thing about all missions and all great brands, right, is they they have way more impact on people other than the thing that they actually do, which for us is happens to be fitness and habit building, right? So uh, it's really cool to see that powerful impact on everyday lives. Awesome, man. Um, so, you know, obviously you were a police officer and then you were very unfulfilled fulfilled by that, that career. Not that it wasn't the thing that, you know, bread on, bread on the table. It wasn't something that was really helpful for you. Um, when did you hit the wall that you just had the epiphany that you were like, dude, I gotta go do the thing that I love. And how did you make that decision? Man, I felt like God was calling me to it. I, I don't feel like I was living to my fullest potential um, in the career path that I was in. And I felt like I was settling. Um, and for me, I, I like when my back's against the wall. I like when I'm on edge and I feel like that's when I'm at my best. So diving all in and just, you know, going for it yeah. is what allowed me a lot of freedom in my life. So I saved cash while I was a police officer and invested that cash to start my own business. And uh, I just went for it. I had no idea what I was doing. It was super scary, but it was the most freeing moment of my life yeah. to this point. So good, dude. So for other people that might want to start their own business, you know, um, especially like a fitness business, right? So many people want to get into this industry. Um, how much money did you have to save up to get started? And you know, how long did you plan before you got everything to rock and roll? Yeah, well, I definitely did not save enough money to get started. I just went for it. Um, and you could start with way less than I have had. Uh, you just have to be extremely resourceful and wise. I did not have a business background, so I could have actually probably started with a lot less, but I started with $30,000 of cash um, that I invested to get going and uh, get rocking and rolling. Awesome, super cool. And from that, you got blessed 10 times over, which is so cool. But uh, it just lets you know, guys, like if there's something you're deeply passionate about, go for it. Don't sit on the fence, just go all in, right? And that would be your, your motto for everything in life, I think. Yeah. Super cool. Okay, man. Well. Um, let's fast forward, you know, that's the beginning. Let's go like about six months to a year in to your fitness journey as a, you know, fitness business owner, new entrepreneur. What were some of the things that you had as struggles starting your business, getting into it and realizing, hey, I love fitness, but I, I don't necessarily know a lot about business. And what were the growth opportunities that came from that? Yeah, man. The biggest struggle was I knew how to lead myself, but I didn't know how to lead others. Um, I'm driven. I can do what I need to do to get the job done for Derek Gygus. Um, 
And I had expectations for others that they were wired the same way and that they're just gonna do whatever's necessary to get the job done. And I really struggled to communicate that, which caused a big communication breakdown and uh, made me realize I had to really grow as a leader and I didn't know as much as I thought I knew. Yeah. Um, so I would say the biggest thing about a year into it is realizing I have to freaking level up on my leadership game. And to this day, I'm continuing to level up every day. Uh, the more I learn, the real I realize how much I don't know. Yeah. Hey, dude, humility. It's the only way you got to grow, right? Yeah. Being resourceful. So, guys, uh, perfect example, grit, hard work, anything you put your mind to, you can make it happen, right? Um, so kind of how I got involved in this whole deal, because this is our shared story too, is uh, my background is I went to a military college because I was the wild guy out of the two of us <laughs> back in the day. And uh, I knew that I needed structure in my life. And so that's when I really fell in love with fitness too. I mean, I had been like a high school athlete and all that stuff. So fitness was something that was expected of you to do, to participate in sport. But it wasn't something that I ever realized was you know, foundational to living a healthy and happy life. Um, so I personally struggled with drugs and alcohol and stuff like that in high school. Um, and then fitness, became an outlet for me, very much I think the way that it's been an outlet in Derek's life to really bring structure and value um, because I had struggled with depression and anxiety pretty much my entire childhood and I still struggle with it to this day. Um, but I lost my dad to a heart attack when I was really young, when I was actually uh, three years old and then uh, my, my grandma had muscular dystrophy so I saw the impact that um, lack in like, movement, sedentary lifestyle and um, you know, diabetes has on people. And you know, everybody knows that is involved in fitness and this part of the fitness industry that you know, we're the, one of the most overweight and obese states in the country, Oklahoma is, and that obesity and sedentary lifestyle is becoming an epidemic. It's causing massive healthcare problems. So uh, after I was pretty dissatisfied with doing what I was doing with Chick-fil-A and uh, doing some consulting work and really kind of figuring out what I loved, I realized that fitness was a great thing. So when you invited me to come out and do this, I was like, man, this is really cool. Not only get to, I, I fulfill the things that I love, which is business and putting together systems and stuff for people, but um, I get to fulfill a dream to serve others through, through fitness as well and get to do it alongside an awesome dude. So that's kind of my, my background. Um, I'm definitely not the fitness guru out of the two of us guys. Derek for sure is. Um, I really love the business side of what we do the branding, the marketing, the sales, and uh, the team side of you know building those systems so people can execute and we can grow our business. Um, so that's my thing. I would say uh, roadblock journeys for both of us working in partnership and as uh, young entrepreneurs and uh, young business guys is just making sure that like you can have systems and processes that other people can do so that you can actually lead them well, give them growth opportunities and inspire them to do things above and beyond what they would do on their own, you know? So uh, that's been a shared journey for sure and uh, made tons of mistakes along the way, right alongside my man. So it's been, it's been a wonderful journey to this point and guys, we're really only like, you know, three and a half years in. So it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, and really, honestly, I would say in February this year, two years into what we're doing the now. business modality that we are currently doing just because things have changed and it's a completely different business yeah. than what we started. So I would say February of 2020 would be two years of what we're currently, currently doing. For sure. And one of the great things about this story too, guys, is you see this kind of conflict that naturally happens in all great stories, which is everybody hits a wall, right? And then when you hit the wall, you have to make the choice. The choice is always, hey, do I keep ramming my head against the wall? Do I give up or do I level up, right? And so we've always found a way to be resourceful, to be relentless and to be resilient and to always choose to level up, which is pretty freaking cool. So I think what about a year and a half in, we realized, hey, what we're doing is not the thing that we A, are deeply passionate about, which is something that Jim Collins, good to great, always talks about, right? But we also realized what we were doing wasn't working from a business standpoint. And so we both just were like, dude, we gotta go all in on adults. This is the thing we love. Yeah. 
and we changed our entire business model to do exactly that. Go and serve a really great market. And we've really niched into, you know, the 35 to 6 year old population in the fitness market. A lot of the other group training concepts really go younger, you know, 20 to 35. Uh, but we found that the 35 to 60 year old is the marketplace that makes the most impact in the home, um, both in the economy and then also in the future generation that's coming up. And we just felt like that's the stage of life we're entering in. And so we went through this really beautiful transformation process that, uh, you know, like I'm going to be a dad too, you know, in a couple months, right? And um, so we realized, man, we're entering this stage of life where we want to build something that's going to outlast, about, outlast us. Which I think is the whole reason you started Solid Rock, right? Absolutely. You wanted to build a business that was bigger than yourself. 100%. Yeah. And so you could see this man's heart um, behind who he is, why he does what he does, and the great passion and calling that he has in his life to serve other people. So it's really freaking cool, dude. Um, we're just getting started. It's super exciting. If you could give anybody one piece of advice to help them level up before we jump off this first episode, what would it be? Consistency wins. Every day, baby. Yeah, your habits are incredible, dude. So. Just show up every single day. Right. That there's so many times you don't feel like doing something, I'm too tired. Um, the excuses are gonna come, your mind's gonna tell you, just you know, watch TV a little bit longer, do this, do that. And I absolutely struggle with that. Does my mind defeat me sometimes? Yes, am I working on developing a bulletproof mindset every single day. Um, and I believe that that's going to win at the end of the day. It's going to make me a better husband, better dad, um, better business owner, uh, better friend, and help me to just give all of Derek in other areas of my life. For sure, dude. Yeah. What well, would be someone you would steer people to see that you look up to? It's an example for you. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody? Any mentors? Any Any resources you would like people to look into and I really look up to Craig Rochelle of uh, Life Church I just think he's an excellent leader um, I love his leadership style he has a awesome leadership podcast so if you're looking into leadership he is a great resource to check out and uh, yeah I definitely recommend Craig perfect dude well awesome this has been a fantastic first episode We've got a lot of meat and potatoes hopefully you guys can follow along share in our story come alongside us we're looking for great guests and if you want to learn how to build your origin story, check out the link that's included below. My man Russell Brunson has got an incredible book called Expert Secrets. You can get your free copy by using the link. Mm -hmm. And if you liked this episode and you'd love to share it with your friends, family members, and coworkers, go give us a five-star review and spread the word about what Solid Rock Training is doing in your community right here in Norman, Oklahoma. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.